the cash envelope system, and sinking funds strategy. I have all the details, what you need to know, and I'll be getting you started. Let's get right into it. So you might be wondering, what is this cash envelope system? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. Simply putting cash into designated envelopes to help us budget a little bit more effectively so that we're only spending the money that we have available at any given time, rather than accidentally spending a little bit too much money, which I know for me, I I am absolutely guilty of that from time to time. I have found this method to be very, very beneficial and I wanted to share this method with you right here in the video, so let's get into it a little bit deeper. Now next, you might be wondering, okay, sounds great, sounds exciting, what do I actually need to get started? Again, super basic stuff. Number one, you'll need some envelopes. Next, you'll need some cash, but I also wanna say this much. If you do not have any cash to start, please don't worry about it. Cash is the least of the concerns right now. This will come. If you start the system, trust me, the cash will come. Don't worry about the cash if you don't have it to start. Next, you'll need a writing utensil. It could be a pen, a pencil in this case, I have a marker simply because I'm gonna be doing some writing here in just a minute, and I wanna make sure that you are able to see it right in the, here in the camera. All right, so with that being said, that is basically all you need. Now, some people out there do have colorful folders, they have colorful envelopes, they have all kinds of fancy stationery and all kinds of fun things. And again, you can absolutely do that at some point, but I would say to start, Keep it super basic, keep it super simple, just some basic envelopes, basic folders, that is all you need to start. As you progress throughout this process, of course, you can level up and jump into something a little bit more fun that uh, suits your personality if you choose to do so, but again, not required in any means at all. All right, so let's quickly talk through this process and what it actually means and how to actually get started a little bit more uh, deeply. So. First off, like I said, it's basically just a budgeting system. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your envelopes and you're gonna kind of budget your life out into these envelopes. By that, I mean basically categorizing your life. So for one envelope, you could write maybe gas. The next envelope, you could maybe write entertainment. The next one, you could maybe write something a little bit more fun like holidays or birthday. Next, you could write something like insurance, maybe for like car insurance. Next, you can maybe write something like um, rent or groceries, something like that. Um, so anyway, that is basically what it comes down to, basically categorizing your life out into these different categories. Then the whole moral of the story is, and what you do is you take the cash and you go through on maybe a weekly basis, a bi-weekly basis, maybe once per month, and you start designating certain amounts of money, as in denominations of money, into each individual envelope. Now, of course, some envelopes will get a little bit more money, some will get a little bit less, but the deal is to continue funding these envelopes so that as you continue to work your way through the weeks and the months and things like that, you're putting money in, and at the same time, when it, time, when, when it comes time to actually spend some of that money, you reach into the designated envelope and whatever money is available in there, that's all you get to spend. You don't get to go out and spend more than that. No, that's not how the system works. In fact, that is what we're trying to avoid. We're actually trying to get into the groove of just spending what is available to you rather than going out and sliding the plastic, right? No, we want to avoid sliding the plastic because here's the thing. I know for me, when you go out and you slide the plastic, it's easy to spend a lot more money. However, when you go out to the cash register and you hand over some of these guys, the green, uh, it stings a little bit more when you walk away, right? Well, at least for me it does. When I actually have to hand over physical cash, it stings a little bit when you walk away, right? However, for me, when I slide the plastic card, I feel like, eh, who cares? It's just plastic until you get the bill. And then it's like, ah, what did I do? Why did I do that? Where's my receipt? Do they accept returns? <laughs> you know what I mean? We've all been there, done that. So anyway, this strategy is very effective. It helps out a lot of people. That is basically the premise behind this is basically just categorizing your life down into different categories, funding these different categories. And then when it comes time to say, do something like fill up your car with gas. You basically pull out the envelope that says gas on it and hope that there's something in there. If there's $10 in there, if there's $20 in there, whatever it happens to be, you're only allowed to spend up to that amount 
and no more, right? So if you have $10 in the gas bucket or, you know, the, the gas envelope, <laughs> I guess I should say, I guess if you wanted to use buckets for this, I mean, by all means, go for it, get some buckets. Um, <laughs> but I think envelopes would probably make a little bit more sense. But my point is, if you have $10 in the envelope, that's all you get to spend. You get to put $10 of gas in your car, into your vehicle, and that's it. No more until you get refilled into your gas envelope. Kind of makes sense? So let's work our way through this. It'll be kind of fun. I'll kind of show you how this whole process works. Again, super basic stuff. It's pretty simple, but let's get into it and I'll draw some of these out. Now, full disclaimer, don't laugh at me. My handwriting is absolutely terrible. I'm gonna do my best, I'm gonna focus, and I'm gonna try to make it uh, legible so that everybody can see what I'm actually writing. <laughs> but again, please don't make fun of me. Don't laugh at me too much, you can, but just, yeah, anyway. All right, so let's try this here. And again, like I said, I'll be getting you started. So more details on that here in just a second. So simply grab your envelopes, grab your markers, and let's do this. So basically it just comes down to this. I'm gonna write gas. I'm gonna start out with a super easy one, gas. There you go, gas. <laughs> I hope it looks like gas to you, right? All right, so gas basically comes down to gas. Here, all I have is I have $100 in 20s. All I have is 20s. So all I'm gonna do is basically take 120, and I'm gonna take my gas envelope, and I'm gonna go like this and stick it right inside, right? So the 20 is inside. All right, cool. We got the 20 inside. We're gonna stick it off to the side here. Next, let's come up with another category. What is something else that we spend money on? I wanna throw this one out there because this is actually a very important one. And this is something that you may wanna put a little bit of cash into, maybe on a maybe a weekly basis, a bi-weekly basis, something like that. And it doesn't even need to be all that much, just a little bit. And this is one of those categories that's no fun, but at the end of the day, you're gonna be really glad that you have this money when it is available, when it comes time to actually pay this bill. Car insurance or renter's insurance, whatever it happens to be. Any kind of insurance that's something that you may pay a premium on, maybe twice per year, like semi-annual premium payments, or maybe even once per year. I can tell you this much, paying car insurance is not fun, and it's usually pretty expensive. For me, I pay it semi-annually, so for that case, every six months, they're asking for like $400. Ugh, I don't like paying it. So in this case, maybe fill out a little envelope and do insurance. At that case, maybe every two weeks or so, maybe you slip a 10 into it, maybe you slip a 20 into it, something like that. Trust me, you're gonna be very happy you have this folder when it comes time to pay that bill because this one is no fun to pay. And realistically, when they're coming by and asking for 300, 350, 400, $500 every six months, you're gonna be really glad that you have this money set aside. So let's name this one insurance. So again, don't laugh at me. My, insurance, my uh, handwriting is super bad, but uh, let's see if I can bang this one out. All right. All right, I think I nailed it. Insurance. Let's see if you can read it. Insurance. Oh, man, I think I got it. All right, so insurance. Again, got another 20 here because that's all I have laying around right now is just 20s. So I'm going to take a 20 and I'm going to stick it into the envelope. Dun -dun -dun. There it is. It's in. And then basically we'll set this guy out to the side. Ah, uh, don't want to look at that one ever again. All right, so next. So another thing too is this is something else that comes up as well. And again, I would say stick a folder out there for this one. And again, maybe you only budget for this one, maybe $5 a week, maybe $10 a month, something like that, $20 a month. I don't really know whatever you see fit for your situation. One thing I wanna throw out there as well, everybody's situation is very, very different. Whatever I write on these envelopes is probably gonna be very different from your situation, which by the way, I'm just doing this for example purposes. My real situation is actually very different. So, well, it's actually not that much different, but it is a little bit different, therefore, I'm using these examples just because these are kind of some common expenses that many people have. So again, everybody's situation is gonna be different. Maybe you have totally different categories. That's fine. Everybody's situation is different. So don't worry about it if your categories are totally different. It does not matter at all. But here's one that I wanna throw out there as well. Holidays and birthdays. How many of us around the holidays come by and feel like, oh, I wish I would have stuck away an extra $5 a week to pay for Christmas or Hanukkah or um, whatever holidays you may um, actually celebrate. You know, how many times do we come by the holidays and we think, ah, man, the holidays again. What's my limit on my credit card? Yeah, exactly. You don't want to do that, especially right now with interest rates rising. Ooh, yeah, try to avoid using credit cards if you can. So this one, I would say, this is kind of one of those fun categories. 
name it and stick a few dollars in there each week. Maybe every, maybe every couple weeks you stick a, a few dollars in there. It could be $5, $10, doesn't really matter. Something counts. So I'm going to name this one holiday slash birthdays. It's a nice folder to have, trust me. When it comes time to pick out a birthday gift for a family member or a close friend or a spouse or something like that, you're going to be very glad that you have this one because a lot of times this is something we often forget about, but again, it sneaks up on us and boom, there it is. And uh-oh, don't have the cash. All right, so let's name this one. I'm going to say holiday slash birthday. Let's see if I can do it. All right, H-O-L-I-D-A-Y slash Okay, that was a lot of writing. All right, let's see, holiday slash birthday. That's what it's supposed to say. It's supposed to say holiday slash birthday if it uh, is legible. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take another 20, again, another 20, and we're gonna stick it right in here and then um, stick it off to the side. So there you go, 20 bucks in that one, perfect. All right, next. Let's think about something else that we wanna do. Let's do entertainment. Now, this is another big one, and again, I totally get it. A lot of people probably don't have a lot of extra disposable cash laying around for entertainment. It's not really a thing that a lot of us have extra money for right now, but it is also something that it is pretty nice to have. The occasional time that you maybe wanna go out and grab a movie. You maybe wanna go out and grab ice cream in the summer, or maybe you wanna go and who knows what? Go to the skating rink. <laughs> Is that a thing anymore? <laughs> Honestly, I don't even really know. I just threw that out there. Or maybe you want to go to the arcade. Let's say that. Let's say you want to go to the arcade. Honestly, I don't really know what anybody does because I'm kind of a hermit and I never leave the house. But the fact of the matter is... I'm just using these as examples. So let's do one for entertainment. This is always, again, another nice one to have. So when you get that random phone call from a family member, a friend, a neighbor, or you get a text message from somebody saying, hey, wanna go grab the new movie this weekend? And you say, um, sorry, I can't, I don't have any money. Well, now you can look into your entertainment folder and maybe there'll be something in there waiting for you. So let's write entertainment on this one. E-N-T-E-R-T-A. Oops, I think I messed it up a little bit, but I think we can still read it. All right, entertainment. That's what it's supposed to say, entertainment. All right, so perfect. I got another 20 here. Got another 20. Let's put it into the bucket. Well, I keep calling it a bucket. I'm sorry. It's an envelope. Um, that's just kind of like my universal um, name for pretty much everything is a bucket. All right, anyway. <laughs> entertainment. We got another 20 sitting in there. Let's stick that off to the side. All right, I have one envelope left. Let's do um, maybe like... Um, you know, again, you could have all kinds of different categories. You could have like um, eating out or like coffee, if that's something that you enjoy, maybe going out and grabbing an expensive uh, coffee from one of these, uh, you know, coffee houses around where you spend five or six dollars on a little tiny coffee. Maybe that's something you enjoy. I'm gonna be honest with you. I enjoy it from time to time too but it is very expensive. Or maybe you enjoy going out to eat every so often with a friend, a family member, a spouse, um, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, somebody like this. Um, you know, it's pretty important too. That's another very important one. Maybe restaurants slash um, maybe like discretionary um, like edibles. I don't know, something like that. But I'm actually gonna write on this one, groceries. This is another key one because here's the thing. There's a difference between groceries that we want and groceries that we need to have. Here's my definition behind this. We all need to eat, right? Well, do we enjoy going out and buying the necessities? Probably not that much. These are the necessities that we need to have basically to survive, right? We all need to buy the groceries that are kind of like, uh, I don't really love it. I don't really want to eat this food, but I kind of have to eat this because, you know, <laughs> I kind of have to eat, right? But at the same time, we all kind of walk past the items in the grocery store thinking, hmm, that sounds pretty good, hmm. Some ice cream. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. It's coming up on summer here. Some uh, some popsicles and some fudge pops would be pretty good these days. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I think all of us are probably feeling that way. So I like to have a folder that says groceries on it. The reason for that is a lot of times, like I said, we buy the necessities, but sometimes we walk past those items in the aisle that we look at and think, oh man, that'd be fun to have right now. But again, we can't really because it's not really on the, on the necessities list. So... On that one, I want to write, I'm going to write groceries. And this one is for the discretionary grocery items, as in those fun items that maybe sometimes we don't necessarily always want to buy, but every so often it's kind of nice to treat ourselves. So I'm going to write groceries on this one. P-R-I-E-S. All right. 
I almost blew it. I almost wrote it wrong. All right, so groceries we've got on this one. So groceries, and again, this one could be for, you know, um, the fun stuff at the grocery store, or simply you could just use it for just plain old groceries. But again, groceries is one of those things that falls into the necessities category, as in we all have to get groceries. We all need to get food. So again, at that point, um, you know, kind of do as you see fit for your situation. Anyway, I've got groceries on this one. Let's hit it to the side. So I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm out of 20s, but again, I wanna write one more category here for you. And I think this is actually a very important one. This one goes along with the sinking funds strategy. This folder is something that you should literally be funding probably every single week, a few dollars, but really, you should set it aside and almost never, ever look at this one. You'll be very grateful and you'll be very happy to have this one someday when you need to rely on this. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. We're going to call it rainy day. Yeah, the inevitable rainy day that we will all have coming at some point, right? You're driving down the road, you blow a tire, and uh-oh, I don't have any cash to repair the tire or to get a new one. The transmission goes out in your car, uh-oh, I don't know what to do. Maybe you have a pet, a dog, a cat, some kind of animal, and you get the unexpected veterinarian bill. By the way, those are very expensive, right? This is the rainy day folder you should be funding ongoing every single week. Um, again, it doesn't need to be much, a little bit, five here, 10 there, something like this, but this is the sinking fund strategy. In other words, you don't really look at this folder. You sink some funds into it each and every week. And again, put the money in there. Do not look at it, okay? Trust me, you're gonna be very grateful when it comes down to the day that you need to rely on this money. If you didn't have it, it could be a totally different situation. But as you build this up over time, weeks and months go by, someday when that inevitable expense comes by that all of us dread, but we all know we'll be coming someday, you'll be very, very, very grateful that you have this one set out there. So this one, I'm gonna write rainy day. R-A-I-N-Y, rainy day. All right, so rainy day, oops, rainy day. Oop, uh, there you go, rainy day. All right, so rainy day, and again, I'm actually out of 20. So <laughs> at this point, rainy day gets nothing. But my point is, um, I'm not really leading with example. <laughs> my point is, rainy day is a very, very good one. My point is, I kinda wanna make some examples out of this video here and just kinda give you some different categories. But the rainy day folder is a very, very important one because we all know we do get unexpected expenses coming up from time to time. And this is a very important one that we all need to fund as well. The sinking uh, sinking fund strategy, literally you're sinking funds into it and just hope that someday you'd never need to dig into that thing. And maybe if you look into it someday in a year, in a year and a half, something like that, you've, you've never dipped into it, Maybe if you have $500, $700 into it, maybe you redistribute some of it. Maybe you go into the rainy day folder and you say, hey, I don't really need $700 in here. Maybe I only need 400. Maybe you peel off 300 and you'd redistribute into other containers to help you out in other ways, right? That is okay too. Again, everybody's situation is different. Sometimes some of these folders, you may overshoot a little bit. Sometimes you'll keep putting money into it and rarely drawing out of it. Therefore, you might reassess every quarter or every six months and say, hey, the entertainment container, I continue to fund it, but yet I'm never drawing anything out of it. I'm sitting here with $200 in my entertainment container. I don't need that much. All I need is $60. Maybe you pull out you know, $140 out of it if you have 200 sitting in there and you redistribute. And again, it's gonna take a little bit of time to figure out what actually fits your personality, what fits your lifestyle, what fits your um, kind of your budget and things like this, your spending patterns. And again, you'll readjust as time goes on. I would say go through your folders maybe once every quarter or every six months and recalibrate. Look at all the folders and say, this one is always empty. I should probably be putting more in this one. This one is always abundantly full. Again, that's a good thing too. But the deal is, you kind of got to even out your life some at some point too. So anyway, I'd say absolutely recalibrate every, like I said, maybe quarter, maybe six months, something like that. It's going to take a little bit of time to hone in on all this and figure out which ones are consistently empty and which ones are consistently being filled and never drawn upon. Now, one thing I would say, fill up the rainy day one and don't look at it. Keep looking or keep filling it and don't draw out of it. That's the name of the game on this one, okay? Maybe once per year, you look at this one, the rainy day, 
And if it's sitting there with, you know, like I said, 500, 700, something like that dollars in it, and you think you only need 500 or you only need 400 or 300, maybe peel off the excess and redistribute it into other can, um, other folders that maybe need it a little bit more um, urgently, right? All right, so let me tell you how I'm gonna get you started. Here's what I'm gonna do. I just made these five folders over here. All of these, these, um, however many I have here, these five, they all have $20 in them. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this. Um, what do I have? Five here. I'm gonna do this four more times. No, I'm gonna do this nine more times. I, I apologize. I'm gonna do this nine more times. I'm gonna make um, nine more sets of these envelopes like this. And basically what I'm gonna do in about, I don't know, maybe two weeks from now, again, I wanna wait a little bit longer. And generally when I do things like this, I do it within a matter of a few hours. But in about two weeks from now, I'm gonna come back to this video and down in the comments section, I'm gonna choose 10 people completely at random and I'm gonna reach out to you and say, hello, you've been chosen and I'm gonna get you started. As in, I'm literally gonna take the envelopes that I have created with 20s inside, yes, $100 worth, five envelopes with uh, with $20 each in them. I'm gonna reach out to you for 10 people that I choose randomly out of the comment section. I'm gonna reach out to you and say, hey, I'm getting you started and I'm gonna connect with you and I'm literally gonna full, um, send out the folders to you or the envelopes to you with the $20 inside and get you started with this strategy. Here's the thing, the hardest thing to do is get started. I totally understand that. The hardest thing to do with anything, whether it's budgeting, saving money, uh, starting a diet, working out, um, whatever it happens to be, the hardest thing to do is get started. So I wanna get you started. Anyway, that's what I'm gonna be doing. So make sure to leave your comments and questions down below so you can be eligible for one of these 10 people who will be drawn out of the comments section where I'll be getting you started with $100, five envelopes, all pre-funded with $20 a piece. I'll literally, phys I will physically be sending you the envelopes just like this with the 20s inside so that you can get started. So with that being said, leave a comment or question down below, any feedback that you have. Also share this video with your friends, family, social media, subscribe to the channel and go back and check out any of the other thousands of videos right here on the channel. Thanks again, I hope this one helps you and I hope it uh, gives you some ideas and inspires you to get started with the cash uh, envelope method. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Subscribe down below and I'll catch you again later in the next video.